Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talk about risk management in sports organization. Uh, first of all, let's look at the agenda. The agenda, to begin with, uh, we will talk about the definition of the risk management. Uh, we're going to introduce four types of the risk, which is include facility and equipment risk, personal risk, contract related risk, and external risk. And then we're going to talk about four steps that we use for the risk management process. The last topic we will talk about today is crisis management. We're going to look at the differences between risk management and crisis management. First of all, let's look at what is a risk. Um, there are a lot of different definitions. I'll try to explain what the risks are. All right, risk is those events that prevent the potential for damage to the business strategy, to those that compose uncertainty, implicitly the execution of the strategies. Right. Um, we say risk is part of every human's endeavor. From the moment we get up in the morning, drive, take public transportation to school, and work until we get back to our bed. And we are exposed to the risk of the different degrees. It's the same to the organization. From the first day we set up the business, the organization is also exposed to all different levels of the risk. Employee might disclose some confidential information to the rivalry. And when we sometimes we are facing financial crisis, and the CEO uh, that had been working for the organization for a long time decided to quit a job and pursue another career or athletes in the teams are violated doping control rules. So those are the risks we're facing in the organizations. So what is a risk management? So risk management is the process to assess the risk that are not only to be avoided, but also embraced uh, in the service of achieving these goals of the organizations. So the risk management basically what we have to do is we are going to evaluate the risk, to assess the risk, and also to think about what kind of risk that we can avoid, what kind of risk we can't avoid that we need to manage it, what kind of risk that we need to address. So risk management is um, uh, get involved with a lot of team efforts. Right? Everyone will have to uh, be responsible for developing the risk management cultures. Um, risk management is also need to uh, empower the employees. Um, so we need to uh, get these employees involved, give them the power and help us adjust the problem and issues. I'll give you an example. Sometimes when we are having a lecture in the classrooms, so if the classroom have some issues, um, I'll give an example. Uh, the ceiling is falling down. So every student who are using that classroom, every professor or even every employee and staff are using that for a classroom, if they find out that problems, they need to report it up to school immediately and let them to go and fix that problems. Right? So everyone need to involve, anyone need to give their powers. The third things we need to uh, know about the risk management is we need to provide trainings and also we need to uh, document those procedures right provide training and teach employee how to handle this risk give them the knowledges for instance so massive shootings on campus is always something we worry about we concern right um, we try to uh, prevent that from happening so we need to provide a training to all the staff and employee at the university and let them know how we're able to handle this crisis, right? So this um, is the third part, the training and documentations. And the last one is having a strong leadership is very important. Leader needs to take it very seriously and lead by examples. So they're more likely to adjust this crisis and adjust these races on a daily basis. And the organization we talk about, we are exported to all different levels of the risk. Uh, we can classify all the risk based on Miller's strategy is uh, into four categories. 
facility and equipment race, personal race, contract related race, and external race. So we're gonna look at each of the race one by one. Right, first one is a facility and equipment race. Right, facility and equipment race that deal with the physical aspect of the organizations. Right, use one sense, for instance, your size, your handling, your touch and smell to examine it, how serious this race could be. Right, so what do we have to do is we need to go and assess the conditions, look at the layouts, and also look at the safeties of the facilities and equipments. Um, so before we're going to organize the events in these particular facilities, we need to go and making sure um, these facilities are really safe, right? So there are a lot of different questions we could ask. So for instance, we can ask them whether is the lights um, is bright enough, right? If the light is too dim, um, you know, they create some problem and issues. Uh, we can look at the facility temperature, whether it's too high or too low. You know, if it's too low, people can get sick, right? Too high, so some people also will have to suffer for that, right? And we're also going to look at the proper spacings between all the equipments we have, right? If you are uh, operate a gym, so you're going to look at the uh, space between all the equipments, make sure when people are using the equipment at the same time, they're not hailing each other. Right. We're also going to look at the conditions of the operational equipments, whether this equipment is in a, in, in a good shape, and also we're going to look at the locker room and restrooms. Right. So those are the facility and equipment race, um, which is the first race we're going to talk about today. The second race we're going to talk about today is about personal race. So personal race, uh, they're mainly dealing with the individuals. Um, we may make mistakes, um, but some mistake is a small, but some mistake could have a very negative and long-term impacts. So we need to go and provide training to the people internally and make sure they are able to produce externally. Uh, for the personal race, uh, we can give you some example. Uh, first example is uh, whether we are using a fair recruiting policies, right? Maybe a lot of people apply for the jobs. Um, so we could see whether all those qualified applicants has been treated equally. Um, have you ever like discriminate some applicants, right? Um, so whether those internal uh, candidates have some sort of advantage when they apply for the positions. Right, so those are personal risk. Yeah, that's one of the example. The second example is a discriminations in, in the workplace. Right, so whether uh, people's promotions is based on their qualification performance or based on the, your relationship with him. Right, so this is about discriminations at work. Right, the third uh, examples, um, obviously a lot of you have noticed about the equal pay and equal play, um, whether we provide equal pay uh, for the equal work. Um, so one of the example is the U.S. Uh, women's soccer teams. So they sued the USA Soccer, which is a national federation uh, for the soccer in the United States, uh, not providing the equal compensations between male and female uh, players. Um, the USA women's soccer team say, well, Although we are world champions, we won the Olympic gold medals, um, but every game we got paid is much less than uh, the male players who play for the USA men's soccer teams. The USA men's soccer teams didn't even qualify for the 2018 World Cups, but you know the, every game they played, they got a lot higher salary than we pay. We got paid, so they sued the USA soccer. Uh, for many years, um, so this is uh, one example whether the people who are doing the same job get paid equally. Right, this is an example for the personal risk. And the last uh, last example is uh, sexual harassment, which is also kind of common um, in the workplace, um, particularly uh, in the last few years uh, with some scandals in um, entertainment industries. 
So sexual harassment become、uh, very common, and the workplace start to catch people's attentions, which is also related to personal risk, right?、Uh, another example、um, that happened in the sports industry last year is Derry Mori,、uh, who is the general manager from the NBA Houston Rockets. He sent out a tweet in last October about supporting the independence of Hong Kong. Um, although he delayed his tweet in a few hours and sent out a couple of tweets to explain,、um, but the negative impact has already caused. Right, it's not just hurting、uh, Houston Rockets brands, but also significantly、um, impact the NBA's developments in China.、Um, after he sent out his tweet,、uh, so all the NBA games,、uh, which was supposed to be、um, broadcast on CCTV. Uh, which is the only national broadcast in China, but all the games ha ha has not been showed it in CCTV. The entire season has not been showed in it on the CCTV. NBA lost、um, 400 million dollars in China in this particular year、um, due to the, this crisis, right? And so this is a one of example about、uh, personal mistakes. Could actually really significantly hurt this organization, not just its images, but also hurt the organization's、uh, financially. Right. So these、uh, examples also let us to think about another questions. It's about social media. A lot of people are using social media. We are using social media.、Uh, one of the questions is: We think social media. We own our own social media. Right. Always we say. Um, my social media is only represent my opinions, not represent、uh, my organization's perceptions. However,、um, the fact is,、um, social media is not just a platform that we are using to express my personal opinions, right?、Uh, why are people would like to follow Darren Morey because you are the、uh, general managers for the Houston Rockets. That's why people follow you. Right. So social media, when you、uh, since your account got verified by Twitter, so everything you say is not longer just belongs to yourself, but also、um, belongs to the organization. Although you don't think everything you say、um, is belongs to organizations, but the general public would think, right, things you say that's actually represent the opinions of the organizations. So social media, when we have to use it, I need to be very careful, particularly when you decide to share some、um, information which could be very controversial, can create some negative impact on you. So you have to be really careful using social media. Okay, so this is the second risk,、uh, which is the personal risk. The third risk is a contract related risk.、Um, a contract is a legal agreement between two and more party. Who agree to perform or refrain from performing some act now or in the future? So they deal with rights, responsibilities,、uh, compensations between participants. Right.、Um, as an organization, we have to、um, create contract with a lot of peoples. Right. Internal stakeholders or external stakeholders. For instance, when we decide to buy a lot of big programs. Service, right? So we have to go and negotiate contract first, right? And if we decided to run the facility, we would like to、um, negotiate contracts, right? The contract would indicate、um, you can use the facility for this this week.、Uh, what if anything got damaged? You will be fully responsible for you know repairs or replacement.、Right. Um, example is the travel. Right, so as a coaches,、um, you're responsible for develop the traveling plan for your teams.、Um, if the team decided to train in one place for about、um, a month,、um, so you will have to sign a contract with the hotel.、Um, normally,、uh, this contract will indicate that uh, if uh, you decided not to stay in this hotel, you have to let them know, like for instance, thirty days in advance. Otherwise, you will lose like eighty five percent of the money you put into、um, the the hotel、uh, as a deposit. 
right? So this is about travels, and others, um, including like employment contracts. Um, every um, employees, um, we have to need to have an agreement with them. So if they violate anything that we mentioned in the contracts, um, and they got laid off, um, then we don't have to compensate that loss, right? So this employees contracts. And the last examples here is endorsement contract. A lot of athletes, uh, they set out a lot of uh, endorsement. Uh, for all these endorsements, um, we need to go and list all the responsibilities and all the duties. Okay, so this is a contract related risk. So the last risk we're gonna talk about is external risk. Uh, environmental element that outside of your control. Uh, how are we going to deal with this external race? We need to preactively adapt the program to environmental elements that affect the business but out of the manager's controls. So what are the external race we will be facing? Right, economic recessions uh, or depressions or infections. So those are going to be impacted sports business. Right, when we're facing recessions, which means uh, the personal incomes will go down, which means the sports fans will have less money to spend on sports products. When you're facing that crisis, then you will have to think about how we are able to uh, make adjustments in terms of the product that we are offering. Right, the second example is uh, we have a limit supply. Right, maybe we just introduce this product to the market. This product is extremely popular, but we only have a very limited supply. How are we going to deal with these issues? Right, and it's also external risks, um, including the unfavorable legislations. Right, um, governments may release a new legislations. These legislations might not be uh, what you really want and might not have a very positive impact. To the organization, how are we going to adjust this crisis? This could be considered as an external crisis. Right? Speaking of external crisis, um, this is something we are experiencing uh, for this year in particular is coronavirus. Right? Think about um, this become so big uh, back to March, uh, right? No, back to at the beginning of this year, right? Um, when we find out the first coronavirus cases. Uh, at the beginning, uh, a lot of people think, well, that was not a big deal at all, right? Uh, since March, when the uh, WHO, which is World Health Organization, announced it as a global pandemic, it has changed everything, right? They changed the way how we behave, they changed our activities, changed our attitudes. So we have stay home, cell coordinates, right? So we have to practice social distance. So when we are in the public, when we see each other, so we have to make sure we keep six feet from each other because we really don't know who's actually have the virus and we don't want to have the virus. Um, although young people may have a very limited impact by the virus, but you don't want to transmit the virus to your beloved family members, maybe your grandma, 50, 60 years old, Right, maybe your parents at that age, you don't want to you know, transmit this virus to them. You don't want to transmit the virus to your family members and friends who might have some um, other disease or other health issues. Right, so they actually change our life completely. And they also have a huge impact to sports uh, business. Let's look at um, how sports business like reacted to that. Like NBA got suspended after the first case was reported back to March. Right? NBA has a, uh, MLB has a delayed start, right? And a lot of college sports events and high school um, activity got canceled, suspended, and even some professional sports league just re-submit. Uh, uh, you find out most of these events are hosted in the empty stadium with no fans supporting each other, right? So they have a huge impact. Um, to to the sports business. So those things not what we prepare for. It's not what we um, get used to. So we have to learn how we are able to adjust this issue, this external risk, how we're going to manage this risk, how we able to minimize this negative impact and those financial losses. Right. 
not just about professional sport and college sport, but also the Olympic Games. The Olympic has been considered as the biggest sporting events in the world. We only host every、um, four years Summer Olympic Games and Winter Olympic Games also every four years. So we're supposed to be having a 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games, but I also made an announcement、um, the, um, in April, said the Olympic Games、uh, will be suspended, postponed for about a year. Right. Instead of 2020, we'd have the Olympic Games. We're gonna have the Olympic Games in 2021. Very big dec-、uh, decisions. Right. The first Olympic Games starting in 1896. If you look at in the last one hundred twenty-four years, this is actually the first time the the Olympic Games got postponed due to a health crisis. Right? If we look at the Olympic history, yeah, Olympic Games did cancel twice in the past. That was World War One and World War Two, right? And after World War Two, Olympic Games has been held every four years except this year, right? So that's a huge impact to the Olympic movements. Uh, when the Olympic got postponed,、um, a lot of people will be impacted by these decisions. Huge decision to make. When IOC made that decisions, so he had to communicate to so many different stakeholders to make sure they made the decisions、um, reflect every stakeholder's interest. So who has been impacted by these decisions? Right, obviously athletes. Right, a lot of athletes are prepared for these Olympic Games, but when the Olympic Games decided to postpone it a year later, a lot of them、uh, will feel loss. Right, particularly for those athletes,、um, they consider Olympic Games, twenty twenty Olympic Games, will be their last shots. Right, so now they feel like you know, sh- how should I focus? Because I'm really ready for competing in the Olympic Games in twenty twenty, but now I have to wait another year. How will we be able to make adjustments? Right, the、so、athletes has been hugely impacted by that because they dedicate their time and effort preparing for these games to start on time, but with the games has been delayed,、um, you know their career,、um, their athletic career will be impacted significantly. Sponsors, right? Sponsors they spend a lot of money in order to、uh, use Olympic games to de-、uh, to 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 develop their brands.、Um, One of example is a PNG.、Um, the headquarter is in Cincinnati, so PNG is one of the top twelve、um, Olympic Games global sponsors. So PNG every Olympic circles they develop their campaign. They try to target the Olympic Games. They hold during the games. People can recognize their brands. With the game,、uh, with the game is being delayed, PNG also have to make adjustment in their uh, promotional uh, strategies. Right, the broadcaster, right, NBC, spend billion dollars to bid for the Olympic broadcasting rights in the United States. With the game being delayed, so NBC have to completely change that、um, their their strategies, right? And also NBC sold like more than one point two billion dollars in advertisement for the Olympic Games this year. So with these changes, NBA,、uh, NBC also need to negotiate. Um, the contract with other sponsors,、uh, other、um, advertisers to think about how they are able to、um, make the changes, right? So these related externals also related to what、uh, contract related risk, right? And also other peoples will be impacted, including ticket holders, hotels, and air、uh, airplanes, right? For the people who bought the Olympic Games ticket, they say, "Hey, I'm going to watch." The Olympic Games, maybe my only lifetimes opportunities, but with the game being delayed, um, you know, the ticket they bought, they may not be able to, you know, watch again next year, right? Um, the hotel they bought, um, you know, may not get the refunds, um, so a lot of um, what's that? Stakeholders has been impacted by the decision made by the IOC for. Uh, the late Olympic Games to、uh, from twenty twenty to twenty twenty one. Okay, so those are four races we talk about in this class, 
and what will be the risk management procedures we have four steps we would like to introduce first step is called risk identification we need to go and identify the risk and then we're gonna analysis the risk whether this risk is very serious we have to adjust this risk first or whether this risk is not that serious right and the third one is the risk evaluation to look at which risk we need to deal with first which risk we need to deal with later and the last one is we develop treatments how can we adjust this risk first of all let's look at risk identification right risk identification we talk about we have to go and classify this risk into one of the four categories we talked about previously. So do you think that would be a facility equipment risk, personal risk, contract related risk, or external risk, um, for instance? So when we are having an event, um, but food poison happened during these events, would this be considered as a personal race or external race? So this is actually a tough question because uh, for the food poisoning, right? So if we are the one who mainly responsible for uh, providing the food during this event, so we will be fully responsible for that. That will be related to personal race, right? However, if we ask a third party, to provide a food during the event. So we asked McDonald's to provide food during the event. Someone had McDonald's food and got sick. So McDonald's will be uh, significantly responsible for that uh, issues, that uh, incidents, right? So that will be contract related risk, right? So this is the risk identification. Second step is we can analyze the risk. There are two criteria we are used to analysis the risk. The first one is the frequency of the risk. How often will this to occur? Are this gonna happen on a daily basis? Are this gonna happen maybe once? Right? How often? Very occasional, frequent. Second one is the severity of the risk. If the risk occur, how serious the outcomes will be? Would it be slightly risk? moderate risk or severe risk so those are things that we have to go and look at i'll give you an example look at these pictures where the entry to the truck from the lower level is directly onto the running truck with the limit vision and no warning signs here someone entering here could walk into the render and walkers and injure one or both parties. So first of all, we're going to identify the risk, right? What kind of risk does this one belongs to? Obviously, facility risk, right? It's the first risk. And how often will this happen? It's hard to say. It depends on how often this facility is being used, right? Right, how about severity? Could be very serious. Think about if someone coming from this hallway and entering these facilities could be very, very serious, right? And what will be the methods? How can we adjust these issues? Okay, some people say we need to have a warning sign here. When people work in here, they need to have a warning sign here. Some people say uh, we need to have a like a maybe have a screens here and the screen here letting people to know who's actually going to running on these venues right so there are a lot of different ways that we are able to adjust these issues okay so this is one example um, how we are able to identify the risk and analysis the risk the third one is risk evaluation so we have already identified risk we also have analysis the risk so we're going to put them into this table Right, for the rest, have a very severe outcome. It's going to happen all the time. We're going to deal with that first. For the rest, um, do not have a very severe outcome. Have a very, um, it would say, slight um, negative impact, but not going to happen all the time. So we're going to put that, we deal with that at last. Right? So we, we classify them based on these two categories we discussed previously. And we're going to deal with them one 
would come, or we have a survey outcome, and happen all the time first, and deal with other slightly less important ways like that. So this is about risk evaluation. The last step is called trading and managing the risk. Where there are four common strategy: retention, reduce, avoidance, and transfer. Okay, let's look at each of these strategies one by one. Um, so retention, risk retention. Some risks are minor, so the organization we're gonna retain them, meaning there's no actions is uh, is taken to abrogate the risk, right? So some risks are gonna happen all the time. We know we're gonna happen all the time, so we are not gonna uh, do anything. We're gonna retain them. We know gonna happen, right? Um, for instance. Uh, most of the organization we buying health insurance to employees, right? We know employees are gonna get sick; they need to go to hospital, right? So we buy health insurance to them, right? So we can't control people not getting sick, right? So this is a one of the example for the risk retention. Second is about risk reductions. Risk reduction is we know this risk gonna happens. Could have some very serious um, outcomes, so we're gonna develop um, a series of control for reducing potential risk. Um, so, for instance, we can make in facility updates, um, upgrade the facilities. Um, also, we can provide some proper training and teach people how we are able to deal with this risk. And also, we can change the rules and regulations. So, one of the example is. Uh, um, stadium safety policy has been introduced um, since uh, Boston Marathon bombings. Some people might remember um, after the Boston Marathon bombing in 2012 and after September 11, all security check at sports events become very, very tight. So now a lot of things you are not allowed to bring into the stadiums. Like you can't bring waters, water bottles is prohibited, why you you can't bring bottles or waters because they worry that you're gonna throw these bottles of water and hurt the other people. That's one thing. The second thing is they try to force you to buy water inside the health and general revenues, right? Um, because it's gonna be hard not to drink any waters during the entire three four hours when you're watching sports. You're gonna spend some money inside, so they prevent you from bringing in the water bottles. And also the health and the general revenues. That's a one uh, examples. Another example: if you've been to a, a MFL games, you find out they have a clear bat policy, right? So they let you know what kind of bat you can bring. Obviously, backpack are not allowed to bring to any of these games, right? You can only bring these size of the bats. Um, and also need to be completely transparent. Um, people are able to see what kind of item you can bring in the stadiums if you go and watch the MFL games, right? So those are the strategy has been utilized um, to, uh, we say, reduce the risk, minimize uh, the potential risk, right? So that's the second strategy. Third strategy is avoid the risk, prevent that from happening. Discontinue the components of the activity considered as a risk. Right, so typically used when the risk is very high and when it's easily uh, eliminated. So we talk about a wider risk. We're using uh, coronavirus uh, during the COVID-19. A lot of sports events got canceled, got postponed. Right, so this is a strategy how we're going to avoid risk. Right, so this is the one of the strategy. Uh, another example um, that I what I remember was when I was watching two thousand nineteen women's World Cups. So that was a match between Chile and Sweden. So when the game was close to seventy minutes, so there were some lightning and thunderstorms in the stadiums. So the referee decided to stop the games. Um, so um, the game was able to restart. You know, hours later, so it was a pretty smart decision, right? Because the lightning center stone is gonna be 
very bad to the athletes uh, could damage to could hurt the audience as well so you can prevent athletes from getting injuries from these inclement weathers so this is how we're going to avoid risk last strategy is we're going to transfer the risk right so we're going to transfer the risk let the third party be responsible for that so transfer risk is identify the risk and then transfer it so the organization is not financially responsible right so there are three strategies that we can use for transfer the risk first one is citing waiver the waiver is an intentional voluntarily giving up the right either by express statements or by conduct so for example, if you're going to use the facilities, use the gym, a gym membership, you have to sign a contract, right? You sign an agreement. So in the agreement that we say, well, if you're using the facility by yourself, you got injured, you'll be fully responsible for that. We're not going to be responsible for any of the injuries when you're using the facility um, equipment improperly. So that is a one of the examples of signing a waiver form. How many of you have tried bungee jump before? So if you try bungee jump, before you try the bungee jump, the first thing you have to do is you also sign agreement with them. So basically you're letting them know if you have any accidents doing these exercise activities, and you will be fully responsible for that. They are not going to be responsible for this, right? Because they will ask you whether you have any heart disease or not. You say you know, you don't, right? But they don't. That they never know that they, uh, whether you have heart disease or not. If you have heart disease, obviously you cannot try uh, the bungee jump, right? So that's a waiver. Transfer the race to the participants or the people who are using it, right? The second strategy is called insurance policy. Insurance is a contract represented by the policy in which an individual or the entity receive financial protections or reimbursement against the loss from the insurance company all right um i'll give you an example like during the covid 19 so obviously um or some people lost their jobs um when they lost their job obviously they don't have insurance anymore right Had losing that uh, but for the people who who still having the job you know um employee normally uh, employer normally will buy them the health insurance Right. The health insurance is basically uh, saying that um, if you're sick, go to see the hospital, um, the insurance company will pay for all the monies um, uh, that you pay for to the hospitals. So the employers are not going to be responsible for that. Right. So they'll basically transfer the risk to the third parties. Let the third parties, which is the insurance company in this case, to pay for that. Right, so that's a one of example. Uh, another example is um, I have heard a story that uh, one of uh, my colleague uh, from the uh, University of Iowa. So they lead uh, his colleague lead the um, a group of student travel to Germany for study abroad trip. So one of the student um, got very serious injury in Germany. I lost a leg. Right, so uh, that's kind of unfortunate, but I'm glad that university bought the health insurance. So the students are able to receive the treatments when they were in Germany and the insurance companies cover all the things. Right, so this is about insurance policy. The third one is called independent contractor. So basically outsource um, these things to the third party, let them do it, and then we transfer the risk to the others. Uh, for instance, during the tax reporting seasons, people will ask the professional to help them claim the tax. Right? If anything goes wrong with tax reporting, the agency will be fully responsible for that. Right? So this is the benefit for outsourcing this service, uh, service to the third party. So anything goes wrong, other people will be responsible for this. Okay. To recap, risk management model, Four step. First of all, identify the risk first, right? Either are they is that a facility equipment risk, personal risk, contract risk, related risk, or external risk? And then we're gonna look at analysis the risk based on two criteria. 
the level of severity and frequency. And then we're going to evaluate the risk, which risk that we're going to work on first, which risk we're going to deal with later. And then we're going to develop a treatment to the risk. Right? Retention, re reduction, avoid, and transfer are the four strategies we talk about today. Okay. The last topic we're going to talk about is a crisis management. So crisis management is concerned with responding to managing and recovering from unforeseen um, events. So what are the differences between crisis management and risk management? So risk management, as we talked about previously, is more about we need to go and develop a plan to minimize the potential risk. It's more like preactive actions. Crisis management is more about like we are having a risk, having a crisis already. We need to learn how we are able to manage this crisis, right? So those are the differences between risk management, crisis management. What strategy do we normally use for the crisis management? So there are four things. First things is called internal communication. For instance, if you're a coach of the team, one of your athletes fell in doping tax. So the first thing you have to do, you obviously you have to talk to the athlete, get to know more about what has happened on them, and then communicate with the entire team. Internal communication, making sure everyone's on the same pages. Because media might have heard this information from somewhere and reach out to you know one of your athletes and ask them about this. If athletes like did not get this correct information, they might disseminate the wrong information, made the situation even worse. Right, so make sure the internal communication is important, and also understand the potential uh, potential impacts. If someone who fell in doping tax, who be impacted? You know, coaches will be impacted, general manager will be impacted, other team members will be impacted, fans will be upset about this, right? And also, um, the community will be really, really um, um, not happy about this. Right, so you have to think about who will be impacted and think about how we're able to communicate with different stakeholders. And third one is position yourself. So basically, as a general manager, if one of your athletes fell in the doping tax, you have to position yourself. What will be your position, uh, positions as an organization? All right. Are you encourage athletes using performance enhanced drugs to improve their performance, or you strongly prohibit athletes from using performance enhanced drugs? If you strongly prohibit athletes from using performance enhanced drugs, how are you gonna deal with them when they violate the rule? Right, position yourself. And the last one is we have to create a mean for monitoring. Right, when we try to communicate with general public, we're not communicating once. Right, we have to communicate once. Look at the feedback from different stakeholders. If they happy, right, we can continue to do more. If they are not happy, we have to change our communication strategy, making sure they understand the struggle we are facing and understand the, our attitudes towards these issues. Right, so this is about crisis management. Crisis management also have a golden rule is never sleep through the crisis. When you have the crisis, you have to adjust in first 24 hours. Um, if you cannot adjust this crisis in the first 24 hours, the things will just only become worse. Okay, this is about crisis management and also the differences between crisis management and risk management. Thank you so much for your time and let's talk about other issues in the future.